Welcome to the Empower to Connect podcast, where we come together to discuss a healing-centered approach to engagement for ourselves, our communities, and our families. I'm J.D. Wilson, and I'm your host. And today on the show, uh, we've got a fun one. It's Dan Coley. Um, Dan Coley has been a longtime friend of the program, so to speak, and so uh, has had stints working with Empowered to Connect, uh, but has been uh, around the organization and involved deeply in the organization for years and years. And you'll hear his connections uh, to Empowered to Connect, as well as kind of his story of how he um, has been on a journey of learning how to be present. And uh, dads, you will not want to miss this one. Uh, but let me say this. Uh, if you are not a dad and you're listening to this, you don't want to miss this either because there are not um, not many times you get to hear uh, someone with the wisdom and the and the, just the sincerity of Dan Coley share about his life in a way that is so uh, transparent and powerful. Uh, and we just have a conversation, uh, Mark Ottinger from Empower to Connect, Dan Coley and I, about what it means to be present. Uh, we share some of our own past failures and um, and mistakes. And then we also talk about uh, the journey that, that each of us has been on in finding uh, our hearts, uh, learning, how to, learning how to be vulnerable, uh, learning what that does for um, our children and those we care for. And, uh, and then you, you'll just also hear some hilarious uh, stories along the way as well. Uh, Dan also had a bird join us uh, on the podcast, so you will hear a bird chirping uh, pretty annoyingly loudly in moments in the beginning, but, uh, but whatever Dan did, uh, the bird left uh, soon after we started, and so he doesn't last for long. But just know that bird is there for a purpose in the beginning, and then he takes off. Uh, we hope that you love this episode. And then we have a huge special announcement about a new program that Empowered to Connect is rolling out at the end of the show. So stick around to the end so you can hear about the new program we have rolling out, uh, the Dads Connected uh, program. And uh, we will talk more about that at the end. But for now, here he is, Dan Coley. <laughs> All right, so we're here with Dan Coley and Mo Ottinger. Um, guys, thank y'all for being here today. Um, you have heard from Mo already as uh, one of our guests on our first episode, but Dan um, has been around DTC for about 10 years. If you've ever been to an Empowered to Connect conference, you've seen Dan and uh, his wife, Terry, hosting. Um, they've been around for a long time, and, and we will be conning him to come onto the podcast as often as possible uh, in the future. But uh, Dan, thanks for being here today, man. Appreciate you. Hey, my pleasure. Glad to be here. Thank you, JD. Awesome. And Mo, thank you also for being back. Absolutely. Excited to to be here with you guys. And yeah, it's gonna be fun. Uh, so here's I think maybe the most helpful place for us to start is uh, Dan, with it being your first time being a guest on, why why don't you give us a context for your family and, and just kind of give us uh, you know who you are, your background. Uh well. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, my, my wife and I, uh, Terry, years ago, we were at a place in life. We had four children and uh, each had come into our family uh, through birth. Uh, and uh, Terry and I thought, you know, we had a great big family. We had four children. Uh, we were fairly young. I think I might have been 30 five or so when our fourth, in fact, I was 31 when our fourth child was born. And uh, I, it seemed like every time one of those children came into our family, sort of the context was from our family, from our parents and, and our immediate uh, relatives was something like, do you guys know what's causing this? Um, <laughs> And, and and we were pretty we, we were really discouraged by right. those closest around us uh, because we were having so many children. Well, about the time that that fourth child was born, my wife we realized how much we love babies. And Terry, uh, there was an announcement at our church one Sunday that uh, Bethany Christian Services was going to be opening an office in uh, Nashville, and. Uh, we live in Franklin, not far south of Nashville. And Terry poked me in the in the ribs and uh, said, "Hey, that's us. We need to foster infants." They were they were describing an invitation to foster infants who whose whose birth moms whose moms were planning a, a, an adoption plan 
uh, for their child. And, and so ultimately that led to us fostering. We fostered over the next four or five years and, and, and had some uh, moms live with us during pregnancy who, who were planning uh, eventually an adoption plan for their child. And sometimes that came to fruition. Sometimes they had other options. And yeah. all of that led to us ultimately learning a lot in that space of adoption and foster care, not something that we thought was necessarily a path or a journey we would follow, but we wanted to be part of a solution. And um, along about that time, and this was, gosh, you know, this was 25, 30 years ago, um, <laughs> Along about that time, there was a lot of unrest in our country around abortion. And, and when I say unrest, I mean just a lot of attention. And, uh, and the church, the church collectively, was sort of taking what we felt like was not the most positive position. We, we wanted to be part of a solution yeah. for, for women who found themselves in that position of, of uh, a pregnancy that they weren't prepared for yeah. and, and, and really didn't know what they might do. And, and so that gave us uh, an opportunity to step in. And, and as we became involved in individual stories, that led us onto the path of, of uh, not only foster care, but ultimately adoption. And, and then, you know, in many ways, I, I've said this before, we, we were kind of reckless uh, in, in initially. I mean, you know, it's, it's like uh, what happened to me the other day. I, I, I realized, um, you know, I, I stepped in to do something like, oh, I was thinking about this the other day. Someone asked me about this. When I was a boy, I went to uh, a, a day camp and, and they were testing us for swimming. I jumped right in and went straight to the bottom. <laughs> and and, and a, a guy pulled me out of the water and said, why didn't you tell us you couldn't swim? I said, I didn't know. And everybody else was. He said, have you ever been swimming? I said, no. I was nine years, I mean, I was eight years old. And, and, oh and that's kind God. of been typical of my life. I, I jump in not knowing it. And that's how we, yeah. Terry and I, came into this journey is, is really unprepared in many ways. And that's why I say reckless. I should have learned from that swimming <laughs> test, uh, but, but I didn't. And, and ultimately that led to us, uh, uh, you know, thinking in many ways that we're stepping in to help. But what I came to really learn was how much help uh, I needed. And uh, yeah. it, it became a journey for me personally. So, Anyway, here we are, age 64, and we have 11 grandchildren, five oh, adult awesome. children that are married, four children that uh, our last two are going to college, starting college this fall, wow. uh, hopefully. And uh, um, our, our family is uh, spread out around the country. We have one in Seattle, and Orlando, New York, uh, three or four states in the southeast, and uh Anyway, it's it's a beautiful, glorious mess, and uh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. That's awesome. I mean, we I can relate to that a lot. Our our you know the recklessness of just seeing something fun yeah. or something you should be doing and just jumping in, and then while while yeah. in midair going, oh no, I don't even know where I'm going to land. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally unequipped, but just believing. Hey, this is this is something God is doing. So if we join, He's going to equip us. So. I didn't even think like that. I just thought he'd meet our needs, yeah. you know, and again, the best word I have for that is reckless. We, we were unknowing and we've learned a lot. Yeah. Well, let's, let's keep on that thread. So in the thread of learning a lot, um, if we, if we all back up 10 years from where we're at right now, um, I mean, for us, 10 years ago is when, when we had our first child come home. So, um, you know, Mo, Dan, if, if all three of us backed up 10 years, what advice will we be given to our younger selves as, as dads? And I will say, yeah, it's interesting. 10 years ago is when I met you, Dan. Uh, yeah. We were at ETC, the train the trainer, the very first uh, group that Michael and Amy were training. And 
we spent three days in a room with no windows <laughs> going morning to night. And Dan and Terry walked in and sat down beside Tana and I. And, um, I think we both, I'll just speak for myself, but I, I'm assuming for most of us, we, you know, for us, we came in ETC, you know, was something that had began to give us hope that just like Dan said, um, we stepped into parenting, uh, not really knowing what we didn't know. Um, you know, I, I came from, I grew up in a, in a family and from my family of origin, um, I would say was, was pretty easy. And, um, I think that I just thought there would be kids in my home and man, we would just kind of go with the flow. And, um, and, and that wasn't how it was working out in our home. And so, you know, I, I, um, ETC was, was radically, it was making some radical shifts in our home. And so paradigm shifts for us. And so we're, we're beginning to, to understand the brain. And that was a game changer for me. Um, understanding the upper brain, the lower brain, understanding the rewiring of the brain. Um, helping my child co-regulate, attachment, balance of nurture and structure, sensory needs of my child, looking at the need behind the behavior, all those things. And, uh, and, and so I thought with all these tools and all this understanding that now I was going to be able to engage my kids in just this way that was going to be so much better. And, and it was, and there was some, there was some healing happening um, but I, I would say if I, if I had one thing to, to tell myself 10 years ago, and if I could go back and tell myself 20 years ago, when I, when I started this, um, parenting journey was in my office, I have a sign that says you must be present to win. Oh yeah. Um, and it is, it is, um, it is a daily reminder for me that, um, I've, the greatest thing that I can give my kids, my, my wife, my, my friends, my coworkers is the ability be, to be fully present. Yeah. And that, um, you know, I, I grew up with parents that were, were physically present and, um, they, they, I mean, we had dinner around the table every night we had, you know, they were at every school function and every sporting event and, and, um, you know, I was tucked in bed every night and all those things physically present. Yeah. And, um, and so like when I became a parent, that's what I thought of being present with my kiddos was the physical presence yeah. that, um, that I would, you know, we had four, we have six kids. And so, you know, early on when we had four little ones, you know, I would say no to go and play and playing golf on Saturday morning because I didn't want to be away uh, and nothing against those that play golf on Saturday morning. It's just for me, I, I didn't want to be away from Tana and the kids for those four hours. Right. Or if someone invited me to a basketball game last minute, uh, I said no, because I wanted to be there every night to take my kids in bed. You know, all those things. I was going to be physically present. And... um Tana went out of town one weekend and um, man, she has been doing kind of this feeling heart work with my kiddos for a long time. I mean, ever since they're little, there's a, there's a picture, uh, a cartoon faces um, that kind of give you all the feelings. And oh, yeah. I mean, my little kids from the age of five, six, seven, eight, they can point at a picture and say, man, I, I feel sad. and I feel mad. All these things, right? Man. <laughs> Tana was out of town and uh, one of my kids right in the middle of the kitchen looks at me and says, dad, I'm feeling this way. And man, I started swimming. Like I didn't, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Like I, I, I couldn't relate. I didn't understand. Um, um, and, and then later that night I'm tucking my kids in bed and, and I honestly, this was such this was such a strong, I mean, the picture is ingrained in my head. I thought I was having a sweet moment with one of my children. And the next thing I know, they're in tears and they look at me and say, dad, I have such big emotions and you don't know what to do with them. Oh man. 
And um, man, I, you know, swimming, like I was like, I mean, I was so uh, caught off guard, but I had to come to the realization that yes, I had been working on being physically present with my children, but I was not emotionally present. And not only was I not emotionally present, for some of my children, I was not emotionally safe. And um, that is something uh, that I am still working on and repairing today because I was not there for them. And so I've, you know, if I could go back 10, 20 years and look my, you know, look my 29, 39 year old self in the eye, I would say, man, start the hard work now. Um, make sense of your past. Um, you've got to be fully present with your kiddos. And we've got to be fully present with our kiddos because especially for little ones, they live in the present. Like, like they are, they are right then and there. They are in the present. And so um, we, we've got to be able to, to meet them in the present. And if we haven't done the hard work, if, if we cannot be emotionally present with them, we will we'll be there with them. I mean, we'll, we'll abandon them. And so um, it, 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 takes, it takes some work. I want to circle back to that wow. in, in a few minutes. But, Dan, I would love to hear your, your answer to that, you know, kind of same, same train of thought. Yeah. Um, wow, Mo. Um, you you kind of nailed me as well. Uh, you know, if I, if I went back 10 years, uh, I, what I remember uh, before I get to really answering the question is a question that was asked in that ETC class when my, Mo and I met uh, for that uh, ETC class, the first one. It was, what does it mean to be with? And... I didn't have a clue uh, of what it meant to be emotionally present. In fact, n- not only was I unaware, but what I had been taught about emotions at that stage in my life, or at least what I had sort of collectively learned, whether it was intentionally taught to me or not, uh, isn't the point. What I had 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 kind of come to understand is that emotions couldn't be trusted and that it was kind of, and this came from my, my Christian background is that emotions were sort of the enemy, uh, sort of Satan's uh, tool and access to us as humans. And and so uh, I, I, it sort of created a space where I pushed that away. Yeah. And, and, and I not only became uh, uh, unaware of myself and a lot of what God had created in me to inform me and means by which he had access to me, I, I not only sort of pushed that away, but I made myself not a safe place, as you said, Mo, for my children. So it wasn't that I didn't, it, it wasn't, it, one bad thing was I didn't know. The other, which was even worse, is that I thought I did and I was wrong yeah. about how to be with my, anyone, my wife, my children. And so I was not safe. And so going back, um, what would I say to myself? Uh, it, you know, the first thing that came to my mind is stay the course, stay, don't give mm. up, stay. Um, that, that's the word that came to my mind when, when you asked. Uh, and and so what, what still rings true to me in this moment is that has not been an easy journey to really discover my own heart and to begin to. Uh, faithfully explore what I feel and to express in a trusted environment, to trusted others, um, what I feel uh, so that I might d- develop, you know, uh, 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 the, the skill of being with my children and with my wife. 
So uh, in addition to what Mo said, I guess what I'm saying is stay the course. It is tough. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like I have kind of a hybrid answer for both of, of, of both of y'all's. Um, I think I just would have, I would have needed the encouragement to, to be emotionally present uh, <laughs> But I didn't know how to do that. Like I, I, Mo, I mean, same exact, <laughs> same exact story. I, I can, I can remember. Um, you know, we have so we've got a ten, nine, and eight year old, and then a three year old. So I'm getting a do over at the toddler stage, and and I'll be honest, I feel like I'm killing it right now. I feel like I'm I'm just working the toddler stage. Like I'm I'm in my element now. Because I know just to relax and like <laughs> Dan and I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I say that because this is this is my favorite age, like right now, because uh, we're getting a lot of talking and saying funny stuff and sassiness and attitude, but there's still this like just desire to be with me without saying crazy hurtful things to me yet. She might try to slap me or pinch me or bite or whatever, but she's not saying like, I hate you. <laughs> so, um, I can cut that part out. But, uh, so I think, I think for me, I, I can vividly remember like, uh, Elizabeth being gone for a weekend and, uh, it was, it was maybe five or six years into parenting. And, uh, one of the kids asked me to sit and play with him for a little bit. And I remember thinking consciously like, I, I can't think of anything I'd rather do less than just sit and play with you right now. And I realize how horrible that sounds. And I know how, how repulsive that, that sounds to my own self now when I bring it back up. And the deal was I, I was, I was not able to just sit there and be in the moment and enjoy being with my kids uh, because ultimately what was, under, was underneath all of that was this deep fear that if I gave that much time, they were going to see what a fraud I was inside. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and both of you touched on kind of doing the hard work necessary to, to see these, these different needs behind our own behaviors that we, that we uh, didn't even know how to, how to see yet. L let's talk a little bit more about that because I think when I, when I talk with other dads and, and as we, uh, you know, get feedback from ETC stuff, inevitably, especially with, with men, not, it's not exclusive to men, but especially with men, there tends to be uh, a lack of awareness of how to connect emotionally to your own heart, to yourself. Um, can both of y'all talk about the journeys that you've been on uh, in, in whether you want to call it discovering your heart, which sounds very hippie-ish, but probably the most, <laughs> the most accurate description. Um, would y'all talk about that for a minute? Oh, I'll jump in. Um, you know, I think that for me, um, more than anything, I, I, initially, I certainly would not have used that language of discovering my heart. Um, yeah. I, I would have seen that as not productive. And um, I, I was about performance and I was about production and I was about getting things done. Um, those were the things that that uh, in my, it, well, I would have said in my heart and mind uh, w would have defined success. Um, I didn't quite get that um, God created me with, with feelings, with emotions, and, and they are means, those, those feelings and emotions are by which he, through his spirit, communicates uh, to me and guides me. Um, no different from uh, uh, my physical feelings of, uh, for example, touch. And when I feel something hot, I pull away. So I have an appropriate response. And emotions and feelings uh, were created and, and were perfect at one time, uh, but then were broken. And so somehow it, I had become convinced that that brokenness uh, was in fact, as I had said earlier, something that not only was broken, but, but was, uh, had, had been intended to mis mislead me mm -hmm. and, and that couldn't be trusted. 
Uh, and so there was no journey to, in fact, uh, discern or come to understand how it is that those emotions or feelings might be guiding me to a right and good place. Yeah. Um, so the begin your question back to, you know, what kind of was the shift? What was the beginning of, of a shift for me? And the truth is it, it was some, it was some friends, some brothers, a couple of guys who came to me and said, um, they, they actually, asked me to join them for a, a breakfast and, and said, hey, we're meeting with a group of guys and, and, and here's kind of what we're doing. And, and so they described something that I really didn't quite get and, and, and they didn't go into a whole lot of detail, but I knew they were two guys I trusted hmm. and two guys that I believed in and had for a long time. And so I said, well, well, sure, I'd like to meet with you guys. And, and we started meeting and, uh, you know, the interesting thing is this came about simultaneously with, uh, you know, 10, 12 years ago of my introduction to ETC and, and actually to Karen Purvis and, um, and how I had come to understand the impact of trauma on children mm -hmm. and all the while believing that this related to my children and impact on them as opposed to necessarily <laughs> the impact of trauma in my own life. Yeah, come on. And, and, and how that had uh, played forward in my life. And, and so all of this was kind of a beginning to, to reposition my gaze, not so much on my children, but on my own heart and the impact of things early in my life that I had dismissed and stuffed for a long, long time. And as I began to unpack that um, with this group of guys in a safe environment, um, my whole perspective began to change. And so. Yeah. Well, and I, Dan, I think that's, um, I mean, I, th I think that's um, what you just said was, um, dead on in that um, I think we so often we center this conversation around the kid <laughs> and <laughs> right. like, Hey, it's about, it's about the behavior. It's about what's going mm. on. It's this is, and, and the reality is it, it's, it's about us, right? We know yeah. attachment's a two way street, you know, it's, but, but so often we want to, we want it to be them and, and really it's us. And so that, I think that's where we all, we, we, you know, myself, I came to that place of realizing, man, I, I've, you know, I've got to do my work. I've, I've got to, I've got to make sense of my past. And, and so like Dan, man, I had a group of guys and, you know, all of a sudden I'm, I'm sitting with these guys and, um, man, it was, it was, uh, it was scary to sit there and say, man, I'm angry and I'm hurt and I'm sad. And, and to have or guys even, meet even, there. Yeah. Even I'm lonely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. It's right. Like, admit. <laughs> right. Well, I, that's right. You're, you're going to say, man, I'm lonely, but yet how can you be lonely? You, you, you have a house full of people, you know, you're, you're, you're <laughs> you know, I don't know what it means to not be. <laughs> that's right. Like I'm always with people. I can't be lonely. Yeah. And, and yeah. the reality is, uh, for myself in the midst of all that, absolutely. I'm lonely and, and I'm, I'm fearful because there's, I don't have much control in parenting. I'm, I'm fearful that my wife is going to find out who I truly am. You know, all those things like I'm, oh, yeah. I, I'm not measuring up as the dad I need to be. I'm not measuring up as the husband, all those things. You, there's just all, you know, it's all those. And so to begin to have some, some other men that I could just be real and be honest with um, and for them to meet me there and for us to process, I, I'll tell you, like I've, I've done groups in the past and it was just, um, I mean, I remember just, I mean, it was like the weight of the world just began to be lifted. Even though in the midst of hard, it was this moment 
that um, I could I could engage myself in an emotional way. And and I you know I remember like I was like man is this really uh, I mean, the work is hard and it's hard on yourself. It's hard on your family. I mean, I remember coming home one day and, and Tana saying, how are you? And my, my go-to answer for the, for the first 15 years of our marriage was, I'm good. And, you know, come home from work. I'm good. And let's help make dinner. And, you know, to come home and, and for her to say, how are you? And I'm like, man, I'm a little sad. I'm a little angry. <laughs> um, I have some guilt, you know, I remember Tana going, Oh no, like I'm already had, I've already had a long day with six kids at home navigating all their feelings. Now I got you to deal with, <laughs> but, um, you know, well, I, hey, I, I, oh, yeah, go ahead, yeah, yeah. Let me jump in and add something here, you know, sort of in the intensity of all of that for me, what I experienced was that, um, all of a sudden, I, I am, as you described, um, becoming aware of, of feelings, of what might be behind some of my own choices and decisions and reactions uh, in the moment. And, and when I brought uh, into my family children who brought with them an unknown history, and their uh, uh, responses to me were, were uh, at, the, at the least, difficult, uh, at the least uh, pushing me away. I didn't understand. It wasn't like the experience I'd had with the children who'd come into our family, you know, uh, having heard my voice in utero, you know, for right. nine months. Um, and these experiences were triggering me uh, in ways that on the surface, on the outside, just looked like uh, anger to anyone observing, like my children. And that triggered them. And so we were in this vicious cycle uh, because I was not attuned to what was going on inside me and, and not processing, uh, not able to, not even aware that that would be a healthy thing. And, and so I'm pushing them away. They're pushing me away. It, it was a vicious cycle. And, and it wasn't until I began to uh, sort of process and, 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 and experience, uh, you know, a, a desire even to process what I'm feeling so that I might adjust and adapt in the moment in ways that would be more welcoming. Um, I, I wasn't motivated by that. I was more motivated by, um, I need some peace. I'm going yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Does all that make any sense? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I think for me, there's been waves of this. So naturally my personality, I'm going to run as far away as I can from any kind of difficult discussion. I'm here for the fun. I want to jump in, be exciting. Uh, you know, let's be spontaneous and go do something fun. Um, and then we can do the budget later. And really when I mean later, I mean like, I don't, I don't ever want to work on that. I, I just want to, I just want to do whatever I want to do in the moment. Um, that is not how parenting works. Like I, I, I don't get to just stick in for the fun moments. And then when, when it starts to be tough, I get to dip. Like that's not how uh, it works. And I think I had these, these moments of panic internally of like, it, Dan, you, you hit it in the head for me. Like, okay, I'm being pushed away. I'm having these responses that I do not understand. And that I don't know, you know, I, I don't have, two sets of histories to look back and go, oh, this is just like, you know, so-and-so, your, your grandma or your, your dad or your, your mom, whatever. I was, I felt lost. And so my answer was usually just like, let's just get to bedtime. If we can get to bedtime, you and I can hang out for a little bit and we can talk about it then. And I would say that. And then once I got the time to talk, I'm so dead and exhausted. I did not actually want to do that. 
what I realized, I think, is uh, the first wave of big learning for me, Mo came with you in one of those groups where I, I just, for the first time, was able to see my own need and communicate it. Um, I would feel those needs pretty deeply before, but, you know, I'm a dad and I'm supposed to be tough for my kids. And I'm supposed to be tough for my wife and, you know, take care of my stuff. And I'm, I'm the one who's supposed to be giving out. I, I can't be coming expressing a need, especially not to my, to my wife or to my kids. And, uh, and, and what I've learned is obviously how, how contrary that is to the truth and how detrimental that was to me to believe that for so long that I couldn't express the needs that I had. Um, and, you know, some of those needs were just, I, I was either lonely or I was, you know, I know this is not a feeling, but I was just exhausted. So I couldn't even get to the point of where I, I, could, I could look at what I needed because I was so emotionally dead from just running around being what I needed to be for every, every person around me that I couldn't even figure out how to feed myself. Um, so there's been these waves for me of learning. There was a big wave of that. And, and I feel like now I'm in the middle of another big wave of just going, I, I've, when I got these behaviors, um, you know, coming at me that are, that are big from the house, I've got to be able to now like navigate why, why am I so triggered by something so trivial? Um, and, and, you know, Thank God I have an amazing wife who's able to step in um, and, and, you know, navigate a lot of stuff that I'm not able to navigate with, with our kids. But I've, um, I've been learning and seeing like that, you know, having to make sense of my own past and, and look through the, the triggers that are there for me and why those things trigger me in a certain way. It's usually linked to some, uh, you know, little T traumatic event from my childhood or upbringing or, or early adult life where, uh, I'm terrified of going back to those places. And so when I see it in my kids, I, I jump in a way that's irrational. Um, well, I, I can jump in there. I mean, absolutely. Of You know, when we, when we talk about being fully present, right? Like that means when that child does something, why is it triggering? And why am I taking it so personal? Yeah. And, and I think, I think if we, we've got to step into honesty um, because you know, so often we're going to operate out of insecurity. Um, but when you talk about making sense of your past, like, like, um, man, I remember with one of my kiddos, um, in target and, you know, I, I think I have all kinds of illustrations from target, right? Like that is just (laughs) with with little ones. It's like, are we really doing this now? Are we going to target? Cause something's going to happen. And, you know, um, being in the toy aisle of Target and saying, "Hey, hey, bud, we 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 can't we can't purchase that ninety nine dollar Hot Wheels, you know, multi pack track thing." Um, <laughs> and for that child to fall out in the middle of Target, like, man, I'm panicked. Like, I am, I am, I, I am, I am, I'm, I'm wanting to put my hand over his mouth. I'm wanting to swoop him up and run out of the store. Um, yeah. I've got a kid that is all out, you know, lost it. And, and you know, I'm hearing over the intercom, aisle 11, you know, we got a cleanup of a dad and a child because, like, it's <laughs> it's all out. And and But when we talk about making sense of our past, like, I remember that situation and trying to process, like, man, why was that so hard for me? Like, why did I like lose it? And, you know, I had to go back and as I processed, like when I was in middle school, um, there was a play at school and I, I went, I was not in the play. I wasn't scheduled to be in the play. And I went with my friend's parents to see him in the play. And, uh, it was like intermission. First part of the play was done. Intermission. I went to the restroom that was just off stage, and uh, the the drama teacher saw me and said, "You know, Mark, we have a we have a child that's gotten sick that had a part in the play. It's a real simple part. Oh. Like, can you just all you have to do? We're going to put you in this costume, and we're going to have you walk. You have to walk out on stage, and you have to. You're basically delivering something." to this group of people. And so that's all you have to walk in, hand them something and walk out. 
sure, I can do that. Can't be too hard, right? So, man, my time comes, and I walk out, and there's a, they're sitting around a table, and there's a rug around the table. I trip on the rug, and I oh. fall. And um, everybody laughed, right? Oh. Like, but it wasn't a moment. It wasn't supposed to be comical, right? <laughs> like, like, but I was, I was being laughed at. It was a situation that I could not control. Oh. All eyes were on me, and I could not get off that stage quick enough. Well, mm. fast forward into parenting, and now I'm being faced with situations where I can't control. Yeah, all eyes are on me, mm. right? I can, I can be at a ball game, and I can be in the middle, middle of Target. I can be, um, you know, I can be at church. I can be wherever you want to put me, where there's a group of people, and all of a sudden, I'm panicked that my child is not going to do what I need them to do, and I'm not going to know what to do. And so, I think. Um, Doing the work, when we talk about doing the work, it's because the situation is not about me. Like what was happening in Target was me focusing on all of my trauma from when I was in middle school. Yeah, It's, it's yeah. me as the center of that story. And when we talk about being able to be fully present with our child, it's just being able to show empathy for that child and kneel down and say, buddy, I know this is hard that you can't buy that. Like, I, I, I feel that with you. I, I wish you could, but we can. And, and, and to be able to be fully present with them. And when, when we are stuck in the past, all of a sudden it's about us. It's not about the child. It's, um, we're not able to engage them. We're not able to have empathy for them, understanding, compassion. Um, and so for me to be able to do the work, and now I am not fearful of Target. Like I am not fearful of going anywhere with my children um, because I feel like I can, you know, I can be there with them fully present. So, Mark, that's great. And, and the work uh, that it takes to arrive at the kind of understanding, that's the, the making sense of your past that you've made reference to many times. Um, I, I want to take that one more step. Here's what I did with that to add to really um, a, another layer of uh, trauma that, I, that, that it, it often caused me to impose upon my children is that in that circumstance, I not only uh, responded in a way similar internally to what you described yourself experiencing, but I went the next step of if I don't take control as the parent here and cause you as my child, the one who I've been given this responsibility by God to correct, if I don't correct you, then you're going to be, quote, uh, spoiled. Oh, you're man, not yeah. going to be yeah. prepared for these moments in life you're going to fail and I'm going to be responsible. So I took it to a, a completely higher level of imposing trauma yeah. in the life of my children. Oh, man. Yeah. And, and if I didn't do it, you know, uh, in, a, in a concrete kind of external way, then I did it through my facial expression, through my yeah. uh, body language and, and just traumatized my children in yeah. those moments yeah. and, and my wife through the years. So, yeah, I can tell you how not to do things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I just full disclosure, I, I snapped one of our kids 10 minutes before we got on this call this morning about, about the fact that I didn't have time to deal with this because I'm about to go record a podcast about how to be a good dad. Okay. So get yeah, in my yeah. face. Yeah. <laughs> and mine were asleep. So I didn't get a chance to do something <laughs> like that. Yeah. We are not to that phase yet. We've got early risers, but I, I mean, you, it's, it's funny, Dan, you mentioned like the, the fear of, of spoiled. Mine was so much, a lot of times it's so much more superficial than that. It is just, 
what is everybody else going to think of me when they see you mm. acting a fool mm. in public? And it is, again, like it, it, is, it is embarrassing to the deepest level for me to say that out loud on something that's going to live on the internet forever. But if I don't, then, you know, I can't do for somebody else what they did for me uh, in sharing that for me a few years ago and being able to start setting me free on this. And so uh, when I am at my best, when I am tuned in and when I am kind of in the zone parenting wise and that, you know, the meltdown starts to come, I can get down on their level take both hands and stick in there with them and help them help communicate to them. Hey, it's you and me in this moment and I'm not leaving you. And I don't care who's looking at me. And I don't care what the crowd says around us or whatever. Um, the guy can wait to clean up whatever we just broke. You know, um, we're, we're going to, yeah. we're going to get here. Um, let's, let's shift to. Some- well, let, let me say this real quick, uh, JD, I, yeah. you know, um, I think as parents so often, the, the challenge is we, we parent in the future, right? And, and Dan, you, yes, you said yes, it, right? Yes, like yes, it's yes. this, it's this, um, man. Fear of what's to come. Yes, yeah, the fear yeah. of what's going to come. So like, man, man, you are not going to act that way because someday you're going to, you know, you're going to have an employer that's not going to take that. Oh. And, you know, my wife will look at me and say, hey, he's three, we have some time, you know, but like, and I say that to kind of be funny, but like, I, I, I do it. And yeah. I think with just same the, the work that we, we do with families so often I hear that. And I, I find myself going, Hey, like, just, just be present now mm. today, today be with your kids. So hey, let, yeah, can I, can I add one little thing there absolutely. too? Yeah. Um, so um, what I recognize today is that um, to to in that in that moment, uh, that's what kind of what I call the moment of truth. <laughs> um, Michael Monroe used to refer to this as the moment of truth, um, and uh, that that moment of truth being the choice between um, I, don't, I don't even remember exactly, but basically between uh, what I want and and um, uh, really what's the best in this circumstance. Um, and Mo, you may remember that a little better, but, but anyway, what, what I'm describing here is that for, for my child in that moment, there's the opportunity for me to allow my child to lead for me to follow his or her lead and, and communicate to them that I trust them, that their feelings mm. matter, and that and that they are that that I adore them, that that you're precious in this moment. Dr. Purvis used to refer to this as uh, kind of changing a poopy diaper when you're looking at that child in, the, in all of that mess and that infant, and you're saying, "Oh, how precious you are! What a great big job you've done." <laughs> And, and now at age five or 10 or 15, when they're in the midst of all that poop, being able to look at them and say, you know, and follow their lead. Be, as we described, emotionally present with them in a way that communicates to them, you are so special in this moment. And you know, I've had a few moments where I've been able to do that, genuinely able to do it. It wasn't fake. Yeah. I could say, you know, in the midst of all this, you need to know how much I love you right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you can't, can't muster it up, fake that. Um, and, and I can't necessarily describe how it comes about other than to understand and deal with my own past so that I'm present in the moment and I see myself and I'm able to be empathetic and genuinely recognize your value in that moment. And that what's stirring in you is what's right and good about you, even though maybe it's being expressed in a way that yeah. doesn't look right and good on the yeah. surface. Well, let's get practical about these few things we're talking about. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, dads who have um, been sent this by either another dad or um, parenting partner, spouse, mom, anybody. Um, 
for those that, that are hearing this for the first time and are not tuned in to the whole ETC world and TBRI and all that, um, why is that important? Why is it important for, for there to be empathy in the moment? Because, you know, like let's say that there has, it's not just a meltdown connected to something different. There's been an actual, there's been something done wrong and we've got to get to a correcting point. Why is it important to first step in with empathy? Um, I, I would just say that if, if I'm not able to do that, then for, for me personally, my default is to, to jump to appearance and performance wow. and, and, and I become harsh and, uh, I, I, you know, I can make a quick list of how to make this right. And you've got to do this. And I become shaming and I, and I, and I express the kinds of things that, you know, uh, incite guilt. And, and so it's, it's in order to avoid, um, going down a, a sort of a path of default that for me is, is destructive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I um, mean, I, I think at the base level, it's about connecting to the heart of our child. Yeah. Amen. I mean, um, I mean, I guess we call this podcast empowered to connect. So that's, that's what we're, <laughs> we're hopefully what some things we're saying is helping you empower to connect to your child and to your spouse and to your friends and, and on and on. And so I think absolutely it is, it is about the quality of a relationship, quality of relationships. And um, it's about being rightly related um, to them. It's, it's the ability to step into honesty and, um, and, and that's for all relationships. I mean, that's, if, if you're married, that's, you know, your spouse needs you to, to be able to s step in fully and connect yeah. to their heart. And if you're a teacher, those students in your classroom need you to be able to meet them where they are. If you're a coach, your team, if you're a pastor, your congregation, and play on and on and on. It's about right. healthy relationships. It's about being just honest humans. <laughs> you know, it's, it's yeah. the ability to step into the fullness of life and fullness of who you are. Um, so that we can be fully present um, with those that are closest to us. Uh, before we go, practical ways to practice this. Y'all have any tips? I'll, I'll lead with mine related to the beginning of the story. Um, one of the most practical tools for me when I'm getting off my rocker and, and getting, I'm parenting too far in the future um, is to set a 10, 15 minute timer and just play with, with one of my kids one-on-one -on -one and, and whatever. And that means different things at different stages of life, obviously. But uh, to set 15 minutes on the timer and just say to the three-year-old, hey, we're going we're gonna to play. I, I want to do whatever you want to do for the next 15 minutes. What should we do? What should we go? How should we go play? Um, so that's, that's my kind of practical tip. Do you have any practical tips for, for starting, to, starting to walk down this road, um, things we can practice that might help? Yeah, I mean, JD, that's awesome. I mean, I, I don't even want to. Yeah. I mean, just. I mean, child-led play, right? Like what you just said is yeah, exactly. the, the and, and the busyness of parenting and the busyness of life. Um, so often we we let kids tag along, you know, like, yeah. hey, I got to get on the riding lawnmower and mow for an hour and a half. Come, <laughs> come, tag along, and and that's great, but that's not child-led play, right? Yeah. To be able to sit there with the Hot Wheels and just, and just, man, I'm all yours. Yeah. Or, or to let your, I mean, man, I don't know how many times my fingernails and toenails have been painted by, <laughs> by my daughter, you know, that she wants mm. to, to do the spa. And um, for the teenager, it might be going for a bike ride. It might be, you know, right now I've got, got teens that are, that are wanting to, I mean, they're, they're, they've got their permits. They got to get their driving, right? All those things. And so we're out and it's just, it is connecting um, with, with the kiddos um, 
And I think, I think too, just, um, yeah, I mean, I want to encourage dads, um, too, because, you know, in Power to Connect, we just, um, man, we just did a research study and, and, you know, one of the findings that came back is a deep desire for dads to, to want to be better dads, yeah. to want to connect with their kids deeper. And so, um, like, I love that. Like, I think oftentimes dads get the bad rap, you know, that, yeah. that we're, yeah. You know, especially in movies and everything, we're always the buffoons and all that. But I know there's a deep heart and there's a deep desire. And man, there there may be trauma in in your past. There may be things that you need to work through. But I think, and, and there, you know, I'll say this too: there there may be relationships right now that that there needs to be repair, that there needs to be apologies made, that. Um, uh, that that would be step one is like, man, you, you have a, a child that you've hurt. Um, and, you know, I, I just say the goal is not to be right. The goal is to be rightly related to your child. And oh, I think man. there's so often there is, and I'm tearing up because, I think there were so many moments early on in my parenting that I wanted to be right. Um, that I said, to, you know, hey, I said it, you do it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you don't question it. You do it quick. You respond quick. And um, and um, I, I was stuck on wanting to be right. And uh, the reality is I was not connected. I was not rightly related. And so for some, it's, it's repair work. And man, I'm there with, with some of my kiddos. I'm, 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 I'm doing the repair work. So for some, that's, that's practically where I, I need to start. Yeah. For some, man, I'll get off this and I'll go jump in the pool and play um, and just connect and, and be with them where they are. Um, you know, I, I, I grew up in a, in a family that was all about sports. My, my, my kids have no interest in sports. And so it's also saying, man, mm-hmm. learning about your children and, and man, what are, what are they passionate about? What do they love to do? And man, uh, yeah. And, and just be there. And yeah. man, I have, I have, man, my kids have taken me on a journey. Like I am, I, I go to things and do things and that I, I love, I, I love seeing them and the enjoyment of what they do. And I love that I get to be a part of it. Um, but, but not, you know, forcing them into, Hey, this is what my family of growing up did. And that's what we're going to do. Nope. Yeah. The, the Ottinger family 2.0 is different. And man, I'm going to, I'm going to engage my kiddos. I love that. Love that. Man. Yeah. You guys said a lot, uh, <laughs> I, so I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree wholeheartedly with all of that, and and my first thoughts were some little different spins on some of the things that you both said, but I'm gonna go completely different direction and say this: some the most practical thing that I would add is this: um, the healthiest. The, the, the best thing that I can give anyone I'm in relationship with, but in this context, my children and my wife is a healthy me. And so um, what I have come to understand is that there are things I need to talk about. I need someone I trust. Often it's my wife. Sometimes it's guys guys that I could not have the kind of relationship with anyone except these guys. And, and, and when big feelings or whatever stirring in me that impact me in a way that I'm not necessarily able to be in the moment, I need to talk. I, I, I need someone's feedback. So, so my 
practical advice is to pursue that kind of relationship with our spouse and with, for men, with other men. Um, That's so good. Again, yeah, yeah. I'm, you keep going, Dan. That's, I was just saying, no, yes. No, no. I, that's so good. Um, Mo, one, one more thing I'd love for you to talk about, um, and I know there's not a lot that's going to be public yet, but, um, but the, the, da- the new dad's initiative that is being launched through ETC, will you, will you talk about that for a minute and the hope behind it? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think... Um, our heart has kind of come out over the last little bit of, of the importance and our passion for it. Um, I think that um, you know, whenever we have uh, spoken or when we teach our, our parenting classes, something that always just shines through is dad saying, man, I need support or I need, I need encouragement. I need, um, I need to do the hard work. And so Dan and I have, um, man, we've, I think we've, we've kind of danced around this for years and we run into each other at conferences or, or whatever. And, and, uh, I mean, we'll be standing in the lobby somewhere and they'll, they'll be a dad come up to us and say, man, I, I need to talk more about that. Or a wife will come up and say, can I connect you with my husband or whatever? And so for us, we, we've, uh, we just said, man, we would, we would love to, to walk this out with dads. And so um, we're going to launch a, a, a dad's connected uh, coaching. Um, and it's, it's just men that are in process. We're not coming as the dad experts. Um but as Dan and I both shared, and, and JD, you shared, like all of us doing the work, we had other men that invested in us yeah. that, that helped us al- along this process. And so we simply, um, we know that men oftentimes get isolated, men get busy, and um, man, they just need, they need some other men. And so we're going to launch the dad's uh, connected um, coaching. You can go to empoweredconnect.org. There'll be a there'll be a link called Dads Connected, um, and we're going to offer some of you. You may want just individual to talk, um, and you know. But I also we're going to offer some things for groups, and um, that we think life should be lived together. And now that may be via Zoom. That may be long distance. Right. Um, maybe you've got some dads you're meeting with and you want us to, to, do, to, to, to do that. But, you know, for us, we want to begin talking about um, those heart issues and, and, you know, to say, hey, let's talk about your fear. Let's talk about your hurt. Let's talk about you being lonely or, man, that shame or guilt. Um, and if there are those of you, I'll just say this, that, man, you come from a, a faith background, man, there, there's a way that, man, we can, we can connect you with, with like-minded men. And, and there's some things that we can take you through. And man, if you're like, man, that's not me, I'm not coming from a faith background. And there's some, there's, there's some avenue we'll, we can do with you as well. And so we just, I don't know, Dan and I just have always had a heart for, for men. And, and what this is not going to be is, um, Hey, I'm, I, I have, I, I have a situation with a child. Hey, I've got a, I need help yeah. with bedtime. Yeah. Hey, I need help with this or that. Like we're saying, Hey, you're a dad. And we want to, we want to, we want to do the hard work with you. And we would love to connect you with some other dads. And, and uh, yeah, so look for the link and we would love to dive in with you. I love it. Super pumped about that. Getting started. Um, Dan, Mo, thank y'all so much for being on today and uh, look forward to having you both again soon. Thank you, JD. Thank you, Mo. Man, incredible stuff from Dan Coley today. And I hope you caught that last part uh, that the best gift that we can give 
uh, each other, uh, when we are in relationship, whether it is uh, those that we are uh, caring for, children, or uh, maybe a spouse, family members, those, those that we're in relationship around us, uh, the best gift we can give them is a healthy us, is a healthy me. And uh, so my, my, my encouragement from this episode was to continue just digging in, doing the, doing the deep work. Um, I think talking with Dan and hearing where, where he's been at and, and hearing from Mo as well, um, man, just a big inspiration for me to want to dig in more and, um, and continue this journey. And so if you're new on this journey, if you, are, uh, if you haven't really gone down that road yet and uh, maybe you maybe you are a steel trap heart person where you've got uh, the deep down stuff that hurts too bad is locked away uh, pretty far. Uh, I do want to encourage you that, that that stuff will eventually corrode that steel box um, and, and leak out. And so the best uh, best thing for us to do in our lives is to begin to unpack those things uh, with the help of either um, trusted friends, family members, or professionals. Um, and so that would be my encouragement that you start that journey today. Uh, and that it is one that is fruitful and that leads to you being able to be your best self and be your most present self with those that uh, you're in relationship with and that you're caring for. Um, along those lines, the Dad's Coaching Program that ETC is launching has is, is got this in its aim for, for dads. Uh, we believe really the, the, the best way uh, to truly cultivate meaningful, connected relationships with children, our partners, friends, uh, and colleagues is just by working on our own personal growth. And so with, you know, the, in, the, in the pandemic season and just with this constant demands of life, dads are easily falling into the trap of trying to take care of everybody else, uh, which ends up leaving little to no time for self-reflection, for growth, uh, and in the pursuit of our own uh, emotional well-being. And so if this sounds like you, uh, the Dads Connected Coaching Program is here to empower and support you on your parenting journey. So uh, there's a couple of different tools that are, that are involved in the Dads Coaching Program. Uh, uh, Dad's Connected Coaching Program, uh, but the peer-to-peer connected approach gives you the tools to grow your emotional intelligence, explore how past experiences might be impacting your current relationships, gain insight on how to foster deeper connections with those that you love. Uh, and the good news is, listen, the team of coaches that are uh, a part of this thing are regular people. So you're not going to be dealing with uh, folks who are on a pedestal, um, who are drinking their own Kool-Aid and believe that they're just the uh, the gifts of God to the universe. Uh, these are real people, uh, real men who are just a few steps ahead of you and walk into their journey and finding their heart, uh, learn how to be present emotionally with their loved ones, and then utilizing attachment rich tools to build safe, trusting relationships. And so uh, you can join the one on one coaching program uh, where there are packages with three um, or six 60 minute sessions. You can learn more about that on the website. Uh, or you can jump in with the group of, group of folks um, to one of the virtual DAG cohorts. And then let one of the dads uh, at ETC uh, coach you along the first four sessions um, to facilitate those groups and help them get going in the right direction. Uh, and then you can carry it on from there. Uh, but if you're interested in learning more, uh, head to the website to empowertoconnect.org where you can find more information about setting up a consultation uh, to figure out the right track for you. You can see pricing and details um, about duration of, of the program, all of that at empowertoconnect.org. And so if you need this or if you know a dad in your life who would need this, um, and you're not sending it to them as a passive aggressive trick, <laughs> then please do uh, send this information on to them. And in all seriousness, uh, we do want to guard against um, messaging to our loved ones or the men in our lives uh, that aren't prefaced. So if you're going to send this on to somebody else, please do give a heads up for what this is uh, and why you believe they might enjoy it. Uh, but we would love to talk to any of the dads in your life, the men in your life, about uh, setting up some coaching through Dads Connected. And you, again, you can find more out at empoweredtoconnect.org. Uh, that's all for today's episode. Uh, our show is mixed and edited and engineered by uh, the one and only Kyle Wright. And the big homie, Tad Jewett, brings us our music. Uh, he created all of that. It's him on the drums, bass, guitar, everything. Uh, that was Tad, so thanks to him. Uh, thanks to Mo Ottinger. Thanks to Dan Coley. Uh, and a big thanks to all of you for listening. Uh, one more thanks. Big thanks to The Bird for joining us uh, in the first part of the episode. Uh, we're very thankful for uh, both The Bird and Dan Coley joining us in the show today. Uh, be sure, if you are listening on Apple Podcasts, to give us a rate and review. Uh, we would love to do that. It also helps us to be more visible to those who might be uh, searching out this content. Until next time, we will see you on the Empowered to Connect podcast. Thank you.